Good evening. It's 6 o'clock on Friday, March 31st, 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, where we bring you today's top stories translated into English every weeknight. On its 42nd day of protest, the opposition leader reiterated his refusal to withdraw the demand for establishing a provisional government. The DP chairman said he has received the support of sister parties in Malta <clears throat> and also the support of EU institutions. The DP chairman declared that during his meetings in Malta, he received assurance that there will be investigations to determine if state officials use corrupt money and that help will be provided for implementing the decriminalization law. The coming week is decisive for our battle for free and fair elections. I received solidarity from the European Popular Party, from our sister parties and the Congress held in Malta. I received support from the leaders of EU institutions. The battle we started on February 18th will continue until victory, until free and fair elections are guaranteed through a provisional government. We are not here for the fate of our party, but for the fate of Albanians. Nothing will change as long as crime is in power. We will open a new door with this popular movement. We will liberate Albania from crime, declared the DP chairman, who accused some media of manipulating the news. Mr. Basha decried Prime Minister Eddie Rama saying he is a danger for democracy and EU aspirations and according to him, the European partners do not support Prime Minister Rama. The DP chairman also said that the only negotiations that can be held are for the establishment of a provisional government. Prime Minister of Albania, Edi Rama, is on an official visit to Switzerland, where he held a meeting with the president of the Swiss Confederation, Doris Luthard. The focus of the discussions was the political and economic relations between the two countries and the situation in the Western Balkans. Both sides emphasized their readiness to strengthen relations between Switzerland and Albania. Ms. Luthard praised the reforms Albania's government has undertaken in the last three years, specifically the judicial reform. Prime Minister Rama expressed his gratitude to President Luthard for the constant contribution the Swiss have given to Albania and especially for the success of the administrative territorial reform. The Prime Minister emphasized that the judi judicial system starting with the vetting is strategic and important for the rule of law, economic development and increasing employment. Bilateral cooper cooperation and progress in the fields of common interest, such as energy, tourism, and vocational education, were also discussed at the meeting. At the end of the meeting, the Prime Minister and President Luthard signed two agreements of cooperation, one for vocational education and the other for regional development. The Prime Minister is accompanied by the Minister of Education, the Minister of Social Welfare and Youth, the Minister of Urban Development, and the Mayor of Doris. A day before the four-year agreement ends between the Socialist Movement for Integration and the Socialist Party, the Minister of Justice, who is from the SMI, declared that the agreement has been correctly implemented. The agreement reached on April 1st was a political agreement for four years. The important thing is how honestly the agreement was respected and the benefits it brought to the country, declared Mr. Vasili. Regarding the elections for Kavaya's mayor, Mr. Vasili said that the Socialist Party has the right to select the majority's candidate and added that the former mayor had problems with the decriminalization law. It is a race that will be led by the Socialist Party, as it chose the candidate before who had the problems with the law it will now choose the next candidate, declared Mr. Vasili. The Ombudsman's Office has finished the assessment process for candidates of the vetting commissions. The news was announced today by Ombudsman Igli Totozani, who declared that 84 of the 103 candidates meet the formal criteria. The Ombudsman added that he has handed over the list of candidates who meet the criteria for vetting commission members to the International Monitoring Operation, along with the list of those who did not meet the criteria. 
The International Monitoring Operation will now have two weeks' time to verify the candidates and draft recommendations for them. The Ombudsman's duty now ends regarding the vetting commissions, passing to the IMO to finish reviewing the candidate documents before they pass the list to Parliament. The IMO issued an assessment statement for the vetting commission candidates, praising the work done by the assessment committee at the Ombudsman's office. The IMO international observers will now proceed with their independent review of all submitted documents. Once this process is completed, if relevant and updated, reasoned assessment and recommendations will be submitted to the Ombudsperson for confidential transmission to the Assembly of Albania. The IMO confirms that preparations have continued to advance also for the deployment of the long-term international observers who will be embedded to the vetting institutions. The launch of the vetting exercise will be of historic relevance for Albania. Citizens across the country deserve a truly independent, efficient, accountable, and fully professional judiciary. The reevaluation of all judges and prosecutors is crucial to reach this objective and shall be launched without further delays. The IMO is working thoroughly to complete its revision of all newly consolidated application dossiers and enable Parliament to start considering candidates, reads the IMO statement. EU Ambassador Romana Vlahutin held a meeting today with the mayor of Fier to discuss tourist projects. After the meeting, the EU ambassador was asked by journalists about the political developments in the country. Ms. Vlahutin did not comment on the situation, but said that the projects for tourism will be implemented regardless of the elections being held or not. She said, our project for tourism development will not be affected by the country's political state. We will continue with our projects that start by 2018. Two, 20 million euro will be invested in four municipalities for tourism development. We are trying to create a program that will combine what the area has to offer, such as archeological, religious, cultural, or coastal tourism, declared the EU ambassador. Romana Vlahutin also visited Divyaka's National Park and said, it is the first time I visited the National Park. We are trying to help the city halls and communities to use all tourist sources. This area is a treasure, not only for the country, but also for all of Europe. So we have the obligation to protect it, said Ms. Vlahutin, who also joins the initiative of the park area's city hall to plant trees. Tirana's director of police asked the Ministry of Education to join the state police awareness campaign against cannabis. During a meeting where Tirana's prefect and prosecution representatives were present, the police director of Tirana emphasized the importance of checking state police officers, calling it the vetting of the state police. Tirana's police have been conducting checks in the last two months in all areas considered at risk. 349 checking groups have been engaged, and 1,300 police officers have conducted 2,800 searches so far. Their main focus is on warehouses, greenhouses, and closed environments. State police officers are also taking pictures of these areas to include in a file that is only opened specifically for this purpose. Apart from the institutions that will have concrete responsibilities in this awareness campaign, we are asking for the help of Directory of Education. I invite students and professors to become part of the awareness campaign, together with the state police officers, declared the director of Tirana's police. Meanwhile, Tirana's prefect declared that the government has already adopted a strategic plan, which will end the phenomenon once and for all, they say. Together with the state police, other institutions such as the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Social Welfare are all also included in the national strategy against cannabis. That's all for our English edition this evening. Please join us again Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. for your local news in English. My name is Mari, and on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.